Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia is a food lover's paradise. And in today's video, I've got 10 foods you must try when you visit Malaysia. From the famous nasi lemak to everyone's favorite satay, I promise you, you do not want to miss this video. Let's do it. We are open and look how good this looks. Same or similar selection. We have the fried chicken, which looks incredible. This is chicken as well. Yeah, chicken. But sweet and, sweet and sour sauce. We have chicken rendang, dried squid, which looks interesting, or at least it smells interesting. And then you have beef rendang, which actually looks insanely good. And then similar condiments, the sambal, the little fried or dried anchovies, cucumber, kale, and once again, you get the choice of boiled egg or fried egg. And this is beef lung or cow lung. This is how they cook their rice. Gas bottle into water, which is boiling and a huge pot of rice. Okay, I think I'm gonna have some of this fried chicken because it looks amazing. I'd like to try one of the lung skewers and then also the beef rendang which was over here. So, oh, look at that. Rice goes into... Which one you want? Ah, which egg? I would like fried egg, please. The rice goes into banana leaf and a little bit of paper. It goes on. Kale. Thank you. Cucumber. Those fried anchovies that I absolutely love. Sambal. And then it's the choice. So, a little bit of... Beef. I know all you guys are going to tell me I should keep it simple. And I know that, but I want to try it. Sometimes for the video, we just have to make different things. And fried chicken on the... Uh, yeah, perfect. Thank you. And then one of these. Going to be a big boy. Thank you very much. What a portion. Especially after eating what we've just had. Let's take it to the table and I'll show you around. Oh man, I do not know where I'm going to put this. <laughs> Look at the size of it, it's absolutely crazy. 16 ringgit again. And this portion is even bigger than the last portion, which is ridiculous. Maybe we should start with the rendang just because we can do the direct comparison. So let's try a little bit of that. Mm. It's very different actually, very different. Still very tasty, but more tomatoey in the flavor. And I guess that's the thing with nasi lemak. Each person or each restaurant will have a slightly different style. Maybe some is more sweet, maybe some is more spicy, maybe some is more sour or salty. Or in this case, tomatoey on a rendang. And you just have to keep trying and finding the one you like. My favorite thing on the entire plate seems to be those little crunchy dried anchovies. Oh man, they're good. And on this plate, you get more than at the last place. So. Oh, they're so good. I could literally eat one of them. You get a real savory, umami, salty flavor. Wow. Let's try something we haven't had yet. And that is the fried chicken and the paste on top. I asked her, it's actually the curry paste. And just look, doesn't that look absolutely incredible? I'm gonna try it just as it is. Get a big mouthful of that skin and the curry paste. Wow, that, that paste on that chicken, that is damn good. Not spicy, not spicy, but very, very flavorful and fragrant again. She brought me a spoon, of course, because I'm a Westerner, of course. I washed my hands when I came here because the traditional way to eat this is with your hand. So I'm gonna try and give it a go. Might get messy, might regret it, but I think the technique is you use your Fingers like this is a scoop, and then your thumb, you can pick it up into your scoop, essentially. And then when you put it to your mouth, use your thumb to push <laughs> the food into your mouth. So, I also know that you should mix this up a bit, so let's get stuck in. And let me just tell you before I do this, the one thing I hate is food on my hands like this, and I just have this urge to wash them and get it off straight away. So this is gonna be a challenge, but I've done it before, I'll do it again. So we'll get some of that sambal mixed up into it. 
into that rice. Because we haven't tried the rice yet, it'll be interesting to try it. Let's just try the sambal and the rice. Mm. It's sweet, but less sweet actually. And again, those anchovies just cut through it. I'm not sure I can handle this. <laughs> <laughs> but from that chicken, just look at that paste. Oh man. The flavor in that curry paste for that chicken, this could be the best dish of the lot. We're gonna try the infamous Ramli burger. I keep being told that this is the best burger in Malaysia and I have to try it when I come to Kuala Lumpur. So, first night, <laughs> when better to try it? Just at the end of Jalan Alor Street is this place, Burger Boss. So yeah, this is where I've come. A lot of these places are actually on the outskirts of Kuala Lumpur. And because it's my first night, I've come to an easy place. But apparently, this guy makes a great burger. We're gonna order two burgers. What's your name, by the way? Huh? What's your name? My name is Ronnie. Ronnie. R-O-N-I. Okay. Nice to meet you, I'm Joe. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, I would like the special double beef cheeseburger and the cr cheesy crispy chicken burger. Okay, two burgers. <laughs> Thank you. And your partners? Uh, no. My uh, friend. Ah, oh, that's what they all say. Okay, burgers on the grill. Pepper? Yes. Pepper goes on. Nice. Now. Oh, he's, he's, he's broken it now. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It's all good. <laughs> little bit of butter on the grill, but you can see the heat of that grill, it's starting to toast up. It goes into the special, <laughs> there they go, into the special sauce. What's in this? Brown sauce. Brown sauce, like gravy? Yeah. Mm. Only have me. Secret, uh, another, secret, right? Another one here, but this bite. Ah, so I know, I know why. I, you make this? Yeah. Okay, so this is what I mean, like, each one has its own style and its own unique quirk. He's got the gravy and I can smell this pepper in there. I can smell the pepper. Look, it is just a street burger, but care goes into it. Actually, this is the hot dog, but you can see he cares about what he's doing. And you know, that goes a long way when it comes to food. Buns go on into a bit of that butter. Now, I don't know about you, but tell me how many Ramley burger stores have a view of the Petronas Twin Towers. There you go. Crispy chicken. Crispy chicken is cooked in the fryer. I mean, that makes sense, right? I don't know why I expected it to go on the grill. Crispy. Cheesy crispy, let's go. Ketchup, lettuce, <laughs> burger bun, mayonnaise, crispy chicken. cheese. More mayo, cheesy mayo. Cheese mayo? Yes. Cheese mayo. What more could you want? And then a slice of American cheese on top. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Check that out. Oh, yeah. Hold on. He's writing my name. <laughs> Look at that. Thank God it's not Valentine's Day. It gets wrapped up in the Ramley burger paper, folded in, ready to go. This one cheesy. Now, this one's cheesy. I saw now that. Ramli, double special cheese. Okay, the beef next. Lettuce, like last time. Little bit of onion. Onion. Ketchup. Ketchup. Okay. Now here. Oh. So the burgers, if you remember, are in the brown sauce. Whilst they rest, the egg goes onto the hot plate. And he's going to make an envelope, a wrapper of egg for those burgers. Look at that, bubbling away on the hot plate. How come the burger, or the burgers, it's a double, remember? Oh, interesting, just one. What's he going to do? Cheese, cheese mayo, slice of American cheese. It's healthy, this stuff. And he's fishing for the other burger to go on top. That is ridiculous. Look at that, a burger sandwich, which is going to be wrapped in egg. It's going crispy on the outside. 
let's look at that. Have you ever seen anything like that? <laughs> Again! He's getting good at this. That's one ringer extra. Cucumber on top and the final drizzling of ketchup. Lucky I've not eaten in a week. Here they are in front of me. I'm not really sure which one to start with, but as this guy says, start with the biggest one, which is the double beef. And there is no way to do this in a nice way. It's definitely going to go absolutely everywhere. Yeah. Oh, it's so juicy, it's literally running all over my fingers already. All right, let's go for it. Mm. Just look at that. It's beefy, it's cheesy. You get the nice crunch of the lettuce, the onions come through. But it is so juicy and so moist. And then the richness from the egg which is wrapped around it. Well, a lot of these places open in the evening and go right late on into the night. And I can see why, because this would be the perfect burger to have when you've had a few beers, I would say. Okay, this is uh, roti. Looks like we've just been making it. I've put some footage over the top of making roti. We have seen it before. So, cleans the plate, of course, or dries the plate. Chopped roti on top. Oh, sorry. Okay, bumping into everyone. The dal, big pot of dal. Over the top of that roti. Ah, okay, so this one is vegetarian and this is chicken. Okay, let's try a bit of both. Why not? And a little bit of samba. It's spicy. Ah, that's good. I like spicy. Thank you. And it comes with a half boiled egg. Just look at this. Cracks it open very carefully onto the plate. Ah, two eggs. There you go. Gonna get my protein today. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. And of course, the tea. Here we go. So the tea is made with sweet condensed milk. And look at the height that he pours it from. I keep saying sorry to people because I keep bumping into them. Thank you so much. What a breakfast. Let's go find a table. A little bit of that roti, some of that runny egg, the curry sauce, and the samba. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah, that samba does have a kick to it. Quite smoky as well, actually. But a bit of sweetness, smoky, spicy in that samba. Then you get the, the richness and spices from the curry sauce as well. It's so interesting. I mean, look how sloppy it is. It's difficult to even get on the spoon. And But when you get it in your mouth, it is so flavorful, packed with flavor. Mm. And that bread, or the roti, it really does tie it all together. But you know what I think makes it? It's that sambal. That sambal adds a different dimension that... I've had this dish before, but without the sambal, I think. I'm not sure why, but trying it with the sambal... Winner. Let's try a hot tea. Tetari. And there's a sweetness to it. Obviously, there's condensed milk in there. But then you have spices, a little bit of cinnamon, maybe a touch of star anise, nutmeg. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's literally just tea and condensed milk, but I get some spices coming through. Hot tea on a hot day, but it is very good. And you can have it iced. If you want it iced, you can have it iced. 
And for the price, I didn't see how much the Tay Tarek was, but it's not going to be that expensive, is it? Three ringgit seventy for this. It's not even a pound. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. The satay, or the meat I should say, is put onto skewers and then marinated before going on the grill. It then takes a fistful of them and puts them onto the charcoal grill. It is cooking over charcoal fire and let me tell you, it is hot. One here right now, he has the chicken as you can see, and I think there's turmeric in that dressing or that marinade, which gives it that incredible color. And then you have the beef, the darker ones, the beef. And you can just see on the beef, it's interlaced with beef fat. You know that is gonna taste good. I've been here a few minutes now and he is just constantly working those coals. He's got a very important job. He doesn't want to overcook them, so he's constantly turning them, looking at them, watching them, seeing which ones need to be turned, remembering which ones he put on first, constantly working that grill. And I think he's been doing it for a long time because this place has been open for over 30 years. To get the temperature up on that grill if he needs to, he uses his fan, his, well, reed fan, which he wafts, blowing air onto the coals, and that will just crank up the heat. Obviously, again, heat management, grill management expert. The other thing that helps with that is the fan that he's got blasting onto the charcoal grill. This just gives him a bit of fine tuning. I just love watching people cook, especially when they're good at their craft. Okay, and you just saw him just brush over coconut oil and he's not using a brush, he's using the end of lemongrass and it just kicks up the flame and adds that next layer of flavor onto the grill. And what it does do, as you can see, it gives that amazing dark char onto the satay. And guys, you cannot have satay without the sauce. And just look at the size of that pot, of the smell coming off that. Yes, peanutty. You have chilies, lemongrass, onion, peanuts, palm sugar, and I'm sure some other ingredients that he's keeping a secret, but that's fair enough. <laughs> it smells so good. You have your beef satay or daging. Your chicken satay, I am. The cucumber, which I think is pickled. The raw onions, and then these soft cubes of sticky rice, which look good. It'll be interesting to try that. I've never had it like that before. And then, of course, you cannot have satay without the peanut sauce. And, well, let me just use a skewer to show you. It is thick and unctuous. It looks so, so good. It smelt amazing in that pot. I'm going to start with the chicken, I think, because chicken and pork are the most traditional ones. I'm just going to dip it in that satay sauce, the peanut sauce, and get it in my mouth. Wow. I tell you what, I didn't expect it to be so soft. I mean, wow. It's sweet, but in a good way, not too sweet. But the taste of the grill, or the taste of the charcoal, the smokiness on the chicken is incredible. On to the beef. I'm going to try a little bit on its own first, actually, just to try that marinade. Again, nice and tender. Don't be fooled that I'm struggling to get it off the skewer. I think that's just because it's cooked onto there. But once you get it off the skewer and start eating it, it's so tender. It's so juicy. Oh, and the fat. My God, you chew on the fat and the beef juices just come out into your mouth. Let's try it. And some of that satay sauce. Covered in that peanut sauce. Very peanutty as you'd expect, but in a good way. Actually, I ate one, well, a place I thought I wanted to go to, I won't name it and I wanted to eat there just before I filmed, because I was nearby. I thought I was eating a Snickers bar. It was that sugary, that sweet. This one is sweet, but of course, because he said there's sugar in there, obviously, but 
It's nicely balanced, but it is still savory, even with that sweetness. Ah, it looks like he is gonna do it. Let's have a look at this as it goes through the machine. So all of the dough comes out in its sheets, already made. When the noodles come out in the cart, this is then the fresh, thick wheat noodles. Of course you can buy them dry, of course you can buy them ready-made, but nothing quite tastes like homemade, handmade noodles. Thank you. And the idea is here, you break it all up, mix it all together, but not before you put this in, the homemade crispy chili. You warn me that it's spicy, very spicy, so be careful, but you only live once, right? So let's dunk some of that in there and give it a mix. Let's mix it up, but first, oh, look at that, the egg yolk. It's absolutely perfect. And that's the point in this. It's a dry noodle dish. There isn't a soup or a sauce with it. The sauce comes from that chili paste, comes from that chili paste and the egg, and especially the egg yolk that's broken up. But when you mix it in, oh my God, look at that. Coating those thick noodles. It looks amazing. Right, let's stop talking about it and let's eat. All right, guys, I tell you, I ate these the other day and I have not stopped thinking about them since. They are so, so tasty. Just look, look at that. Big pile. How good does that look? Coated in a huge amount of chili. I might've gone a little overboard. I'm a bit scared to try it now. But like I said, you only live once. And if you're gonna have chili pan me, chili pan me, chili noodles, you may as well add a ton of chili. Anyway. Mm. Oh man. These noodles are something else. Like, it is dry, but because of that egg, there's a thickness and a richness of a sauce that's made from that. But not just that, it's the textures within this noodle dish as well. You have the chewy noodles, the soft egg, the creamy egg yolk and egg white once you've mixed it up. And then the crunch and the saltiness of those fried anchovies. You know, it reminds me a little bit of the Sichuan dish, Dan Dan Mian, <coughs> like chili beef noodles. And that makes sense because although this is a Malaysian dish and apparently as I say invented by this restaurant very famous in Kuala Lumpur it's of Hakka origin which includes the region of Sichuan in China so it does make sense that it's giving me that that type of feeling but if you were making the perfect bowl of noodles for me like I love soup noodles and I love you know noodles with wontons in and big chunks of meat and crab and whatever but for me 
if you were making the perfect bowl of noodles, they wouldn't be that far off this. And I think it could only work with these handmade or homemade noodles. I don't think it would work with the dry ones because the texture would be wrong. The, the chewiness, the bounciness of these noodles is what, is what makes them, I think, along with that crispy chili sauce. And let me tell you, this is like a rocket fuel. It is spicy. It's not too spicy. I could maybe even add a touch more. But the savory flavor from this, the umami flavor from this, especially with those anchovies, which also is packed with savory umami flavor. Wow. The more I think about it, the more I think it's genius that they've added the crispy fried anchovy. And that is exactly why I love this cultural blending that you have in this country. It's a dish descending from Chinese origin. Of course, you can get those flavors, but the crispy fried anchovies, very Malaysian, and that pop of saltiness, the crunch. The noodles are great without them. You get mouthfuls without them, of course. But when you get one and you bite into it, oh man, next level. And that pork, because it's minced pork, just sticks to the noodles in little clumps. The starchiness of those noodles must, must hold it in there. Mm. Every mouthful is an absolute pleasure to eat. You have to come and eat these noodles. You can find chili pan meat all over Kuala Lumpur, I'm sure, but come and eat the original. I just found a stall making fried banana, pisang goreng. And I love fried banana, so maybe as a snack to start us off. We always end up doing this, right? Starting off with something sweet before we have something savory, but maybe we'll get one of these. Look, you can hear the roar of that frying. You can hear the roar of the banana frying. He's busy, so it's a good sign. These gorgeous bananas. It's in Pisang, Pisang Goreng. 160 per piece. And he does curry puffs as well. Maybe we'll get curry puffs as well. Oh, he's putting some in. so noisy he has gas flame on super high heat to fry them really hard so he dips the whole banana whole banana not slices whole banana into the thick batter thick flour batter and then they go straight into the fryer and they come out <laughs> beautifully golden and crisp we're definitely going to get one of these he also got these other things here sesame balls in the queue but in the shade because it is hot today it's been cloudy and raining every single day but today my god and i forgot to put sun cream on uh two pisang goreng please yeah please you want you want banana as well huh? you want to try banana oh, okay. can i have one in separate bags please so one one for her and one for me yeah uh, yeah, but I paid for two. And then one banana for her as well, right? So one banana for me and one banana for her. And I pay for two. 
This is con confusing now. Right, so that's two. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It's okay. It's okay. There was someone who was hungry and wanted to try them, so one guy bought one thing for her, and I bought her a banana pisang goreng. Right. Let's try it. But it, I have a feeling they've just come out of the fry. They are going to be hot. Okay. Time to taste. Well, maybe not straight away, as I say. I can feel just how hot it is through the paper. But look how crispy it looks. I mean, he's fried it in such a high heat and that batter is so light and fluffy that it's got little holes in. You just know it's going to be so crispy. I think if I try and bite into it now, my mouth will be done for. Can't wait any longer. Wrapped it up. Let's try it. Oh my. Mmm. Wow. Super tasty. The banana is hot, obviously, and when it's fried, it's softened into this creamy, very, very hot, but unctuous, creamy, sweet banana flavor. Oh, man. But the texture of that batter, as I said, it's super light, super crunchy. Must be a little bit of sugar in there, a touch of salt actually. There's a, a some savory hit to it, but I'm not the biggest fan of grilled banana. Let's say I think it dries it out. It's not as good as just eating a banana. But this this is pretty special, and just look at it. See, right? Just see that yellow, creamy banana on the inside. It's got like a banana custard. I mean, it holds itself together. Oh. One uh, Assam laksa, small, please. Assam laksa. Yes, please. If the popularity is anything to go by, this place is busy. So I have a feeling it's going to be good. Hello. Ah, thank you. Let's hit the table. Wow, the first thing that hits me is the smell. It smells absolutely incredible. Ah, okay. I was expecting chicken. It looks like it's mackerel. If my first sighting is good, I mean, I've eaten a lot of mackerel and that definitely looks like mackerel. Let me just dig into this bowl and see. So, we have those white rice noodles on the bottom, thick noodles, huge chunks. It is, ma I'm, I'm convinced it's mackerel, huge chunks of mackerel. I guess we'll know when we taste. And then chunks of that pineapple that we saw in there. Interesting, slices of the courgette, the raw onion and the mint. And then she just poured over that curry soup. It looks pretty good, it smells amazing. Let's get stuck in. Ah, it's wet. Ah, thank you. Thank you, thank you. My bag is getting wet. Right, let's dig in. Let's try some of that broth first. Mmm, oh wow. It's so sour. Uh, not so sour, but the flavor profile is definitely sour. I cannot remember the last time I've eaten something where it is just sour. The flavor profile in Thailand, and also in Malaysia really, is a baseline sweetness to a lot of the cuisine. This is something totally, totally different. It's fragrant, it's sour, there's a touch of spice in there. Finally, we found some good food in Chinatown. Just look at that. The thing I love about these thick noodles is that the sauce or the broth just sticks to them and it just sucks up so much of that flavor. Soft, bouncy noodles, crunchy courgette. The courgette is raw, so you get a nice crunch from it. And actually, we should try that fish and see, and see if it actually is mackerel like I think it is. It's mackerel. Mm. Mackerel has so much flavor as well. Big, bold fish, delicious, oily. 
what a bowl of noodles. And I don't know what the souring agent is. It tastes a little bit like lamb, but it actually might be, since there are chunks of pineapple in there, it might actually be soured with pineapple juice. And that would make sense because there is a fruitiness to that sourness, which is why I thought it was lime initially. I wouldn't have thought that would have worked, such a sour dish with that bold fish like a mackerel. But the more I taste it, the more I'm convinced actually it's tamarind, which also has that like fruity sourness in there. So I think it is tamarind which is souring it. So the kind people over here have just given me this sauce and I tried it, it tastes like shrimp paste. That was the first flavor that came to mind, but actually, apparently it's prawn head sauce. So we're gonna get a ton of that on there to amp up the savory flavor. They think I've added too much, <laughs> but people always say this, yummy, yummy. It's enough, it's enough, it's enough. So we'll give that a mix in. And try it with that. Okay, mixed in. This is the same reaction I get with bala when I have the raw fermented fish in somtam in papaya salad in Thailand. People are like, wow, farang, or foreigner, he cannot eat this. But I love that strong fermented fishy flavor, so not a problem. Let's try it now. Mm. That rounds off that sourness and adds in a new dimension of savory. And you can't actually taste it as this like, if you taste it alone, you taste it as this like, well, let's try it, I'll show you guys. Yeah, if you taste it alone, it is pungent. Now he says it's prawn head. You taste that prawn head in there, the roasted prawn heads. You know when you suck the head of the prawn? Well, I do. <laughs> I'll get demonetized for that. But when you suck out the juices from the head of the prawn, that tastes exactly the same as that. That is amazing in a bottle. So I actually don't think it's fermented at all. It is just the juice from the head, the head juice, let's call it. And um, yeah, just takes that laxa to a whole new level. Delicious. And eight ringgit, eight ringgit for a small bowl and that's more than enough. I was just saying to these guys over here that they asked me what the difference was. Yes. Thank you. I've got five new subscribers, but they asked me what the difference was. And I explained it in a way that before adding the head sauce, you are smacked in the face by the sourness. And I was surprised by how sour it actually was. Once you add the prawn head sauce, it rounds that flavor out and everything just sings a lot better in the bowl. I know that sounds weird, but if you try it, you'll know and you will understand what I'm saying. Or you just think I'm a crazy man. Anyway, let me finish this. Let's pay. Eight ringgit. He paid for yeah, me? He paid for you. No way. So egg noodles cooked in that hot water. You see the starchy water there. And this is the water where I think the beef balls are cooked. The beef balls in here? The soup. Okay. Ah, the soup yeah. with the beef balls. This is what it looks like. Oh, there you go. Those thin egg noodles. A little bit of chili oil. I'll get tossed around and straight into the bowl. Smells oh, good, guys. And then top with some of that minced tea. Oh, how good is that? Ready to go. Let's dry beef noodles and then the beef balls with the soup. Thank you. Harima Kasi, I should be saying. They look so good. Let's just try the beef mince first and see if we need to do anything to it. Oh man. Oh man. There is so much flavor in that beef mince sauce. I want to call it bolognese because it is very bolognese. And when I'm eating it, it does remind me of that. But of course it's not. 
it's Asian flavour, you can taste the soy sauce in there. It is very flavourful of beef. I think, I don't know what it is, maybe it is the soy sauce or the way they've cooked it. There's a bitterness at the end, which I like because I've been used to having sweetness on it, but there is a bitterness to this beef noodles. It is not spicy, so again, I'm going to be tempted to add some of this chilli into it. Just get a good amount of chilli on there. You can just see. Oh look, because it is a dry noodle, of course, there's not much broth in it to kind of hold it apart. So it, as it's cooled down a little bit, the noodles have stuck together a touch. But once you start to mix that sauce through it, I just look at how thick that sauce is. It coats those egg noodles. And I tell you what guys, the smell that coming off this is crazy. I'm gonna use, kill me now, I'm gonna use a touch of that broth just to loosen it up. And there's no problem for me in doing that because after all, it is a beef stock, so it's only going to add to the flavor. Just a touch, just to lighten it. How good does that look? Honey, let's stop talking about it and let's get into it. Those egg noodles, they're not overcooked. They're a little bit, as I would call, al dente, being Italian, as you can see. There's a chew to them, there's a bite to them, because he cooks them so quickly in that water that it still gives them that texture, which is nice. They're not mushy or claggy, which sometimes you can get with overcooked noodles. As I said, that sauce coats the outside of them so nicely that it just, in every mouthful, you get that flavor of that beefy sauce. I don't know why I picked the camera up to talk to you guys because then I can't eat. These are too good to stop. You know my favorite part about it is when you come across little pockets of that meat sauce with the bits of ground beef in there, which is that. Mm. That is so good. Right, one more mad for a big spoon of that meat sauce and a big, <laughs> a big chopstick full of noodles. Oh, they're so good. You have to come to Sung Ki Beef Ball Noodle Restaurant right on the outside of Chinatown in Kuala Lumpur. You don't have an excuse, you're gonna come to Chinatown anyway. So check out this place on the way. Right guys, let me show you what's on the plate. And I'm not gonna give you the actual names of the curry, apologies for that, so it's gonna be a very high level overview. But as I said, you get your base of rice and then you can just choose from those clay pots. I got fish curry, aubergine curry, spinach curry, tofu curry, which he said was spicy, and then a chicken leg, which he also said was spicy. So all of that, huge plate. I don't know how much it costs yet, and then I got a couple of poppadoms on the side to try with it. And these very nice guys next to me tell me, with the drink I've ordered, this is a complete Indian meal, so I'm doing something right. It is difficult to know where to start in these dishes, but I guess let's just go around the clock and try each one and tell you what it's like. So I'm gonna start with the chicken. It's the chicken drumstick, very tender and juicy. It just pulled apart with the spoon. I didn't even need anything else. You get a little bit of that rice, a little bit of the sauce that came off it, and we'll, let's try it. Mm. It is spicy, it has a little bit of a kick to it. Not too bad for me, but you can tell there's a bit of dried chili in there because it hits at the back of the throat. There's almost a smokiness to it, but the chicken, chicken is very good. And with that rice, oh, I really have missed Indian flavors, I must admit. As much as I love Asian food, I really, really do love Indian food. All right, next up, let's try some of that spinach. And the thing I love most about Indian food is, yes, meat curries are amazing. I love meat as much as the next person. But if you want to become vegetarian or even vegan, India is the place to go because they have the most spectacular range and diversity of vegetarian food. I would say some of the best in the world. So 
high expectations for these vegetable curries here. Mmm. Mmm. It's rich. You've got the bitterness of the spinach, but it's sour as well. I don't know what the flavour is in there, but... Wow, that is good. I mean, it literally is just, <clears throat> looking at it, you wouldn't think. It is just blended spinach with some spices in there. But oh man, what a flavour that is. Mm. Ah, the drink is here. Thank you. Thank you. Moro. Moro? Moro? More. M-O. More. Ah, maybe that's why I didn't understand. <laughs> more. A yogurt drink called more with ice in it. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Really delicious. Rich from the yogurt, but <clears throat> because it's yogurt, you have a sourness as well in it. That's pretty good. And with the hot weather, the ice more drink, the spicy curries on the plate. These guys told me that this was the perfect combination, the Indian combination. The only thing they said that is missing is the banana leaf, which we're being served on the plate. That's outside of my control, so don't blame me for that. And using my hands to eat, which my excuse is, apart from the fact that I don't like eating with my hands, the excuse is I need to keep touching the camera. So, with messy hands, it's not really going to work. Anyway, as I was saying, you can tell the quality of a good vegetarian dish when you don't miss the meat. Eating that spinach puree, who needs meat? All right, next up, let's go vegetarian again. Let's try the aubergine curry. Mm. Mm. Soft and silky, the aubergine has been cooked down very silky, very smooth. That aubergine just sucks up all of the flavors around it. And this is the one where, of all of them that we've had so far, you can taste the spices more than anything else. Not spicy, but you can taste the spices just because I think the aubergine, as I say, sucks in those flavors of the curry sauce or the gravy around it. Mm. Cumin, coriander. There must be yogurt in there too. It's a little bit of, like that. There's a little bit of acidity from that. You can just see how that sauce clings to the aubergine. See, I'm using my hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go, that counts. I'm authentic. <laughs> Let's try it with a little bit of that poppadom. Now, we all know poppadoms, right? But as I've said previously, a lot of the textures are quite similar on the plate. So the poppadom will give that crunch. Let's get a little bit of that. Let's try it with the other vegetarian one, the tofu curry in a spicy sauce. Mm. Mm. Nice crunchy poppadom. The tofu is bouncy with a rich tomato spicy sauce around it. Again, I'm not missing meat at all. I mean, I have meat on the plate, come on. But... Only because I wanted to try a variety, I could easily eat this as a vegetarian meal. I tell you what, it's going to be hard to beat the aubergine one. So good. Especially with crunchy poppadom. And if anything is too spicy, this more just cools it all down saved the fish until last and it was a fried fillet of fish covered in spices which I then poured this turmeric curry sauce over the top he told me to do that so I took his advice let's try a little bit of that and I know we have literally just gone through each one trying them but how else am I going to do this mm. again it tastes like mackerel maybe it is a large mackerel in fact, I'm almost certain it's mackerel. The beauty of having a fish like mackerel, because it's big and oily and big in flavor, is you can put 
a huge amount of spice onto it and it not hide the flavor of the fish. So, it's very aromatic, it's very spicy, <clears throat> it's rich, it's oily. The skin is delicious, so much flavor in the skin, so much goodness in the skin. And because it's been fried, the spice paste on the outside has toasted in the pan and just adds another dimension to it. That is, that is also special. I would say better than the chicken. The chicken is good, but the fish is better. But if I was to pick one, I could only eat one with rice. It's the fish or the aubergine. Might have to go for the aubergine. How, how shocking is that? Uh, can I have some rendang, leg veins? Thank you. What are they called? Beggar deal. Beggar deal. <laughs> Beggar deal. Yeah, one of them. Okay. And then. And green chili. Perfect. Thank you. All right, let's find a place to sit and let me show you this. I know what you are going to say to me. You are going to say, this is far too much food for one person. But let me also tell you, if I only ordered one thing, you'd say, you can't make a video on that. So, let me show you. You have your rice, your base of rice that he's put a little bit of the curry sauce on top. So it looks like some of the curry sauce is the same with a lot of the curries. So he's put a few spoonfuls of that over the rice. And then what have I chosen? beef rendang and just look how thick that sauce is on that rendang actually I saw what he did he put the beef onto the plate and then scooped the sauce over the top which was in another bowl I asked for fish and he gave me a spicy mackerel that looks amazing with a chili sambal over the top you can just see I think it's a lime leaf or a curry leaf sitting on top of that this is the begradil the potato crispy fried potato on the outside, presumed soft on the inside. That looks pretty nice. And then it wasn't veins, thankfully. That sounds a little bit weird, even for me. It is beef tendons, and just look how soft and jiggly they are. Delicious when cooked like that. I also later asked for an egg, just because I don't see egg curry that often, but actually I do love egg curry, and if you've never had egg curry, I recommend it. And then finally, you have your sambals on the side, but I also ordered ayam pop, which is this like boiled fried chicken with a chili, chili sauce or sambal on the side too. And this is prepared fresh, which is why it came on the side. All right, guys, time to get stuck in. And as ever with these dishes, it's a little difficult to know where to start. It all looks amazing. And what I love most actually is just the colors, the pop of color, the green from the sambal, the red from the sambal the spicy fish, vibrant red, and then the yellowness from that curry sauce on the bed of the white rice. It looks beautiful. I mean, the first thing you do is eat with your eyes, right? But then, of course, it comes down to the taste. So, let's get stuck in. Mm. Wow, that is spectacular. One of the best rendang sauces I've tried. Actually, I'll be honest with you, I thought it was going to be tough because to cut it, you actually have to use the fork and the spoon. It doesn't just pull apart. But I think that's simply because it's cooled down and it's just a bit more held together. But when you put it in your mouth, it's so soft, it's so tender, it's so flavorful, but the star is that rendang sauce. It's thick, it's rich. It's got a smoky taste to it, and I don't know if they use roasted coconut as well as normal coconut in there, but my God, it is absolutely packed with flavor, insane. Oh yeah. Let's park this for just a second, and let's try this ayam pop. It's chicken with the chili sambal. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? And it is the... It's a slight cut off the breast, at the end of the breast, next to the wing. I prefer leg, but to be honest, this looks juicy and moist. I mean, look, let's just tear that apart. 
just comes apart so nicely if I can get a proper grip of it. Finally, I'm using my hands, you'll say. Let's get a little, let's get a little bit of that chicken and dip it into the sambal. Oh, wow. Again, oh, wow. The thing is, everything at this place is so good. That has such a unique flavor. What is that? Ah. That is the flavor. It's a stink bean. That sulfurous, slightly bitter flavor. Oh, yeah. That sambal is spicy. It's rich, it's intense but then you get this unique flavor and stink beans have a truly unique flavor. You get that running through it. Oh man, that is delicious. Just look at that red sambal sat on that white meat. When you come to a Padang restaurant, Ayam Pop has to, has to, has to be on the menu.